Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the Turbo John YouTube channel. I appreciate y'all joining. We just got over here to the shop. I just got over here. We're going to mess with uh, my car a little bit, mess with Randy's for a little bit. Got a lot going on. We've got a race coming up this weekend. It's the 252 list. It's similar to the Street Outlaws. And they do a list race every year. I've been trying to go. And every year something's been happening with my car. I, it's just never happened. It's never made it. Uh, it's down at Kenston Drag Strip. It's kind of an eastern North Carolina thing. And that's how they got the 252. That's the area code down there. They usually have a lot of support. They have some pretty big payouts, you know, at the end of the year. And it looks like the guys are having a blast. I'm going to try to mix it up a little bit this year. Hopefully everything will work out good. Uh, we were at Darlington uh, one week, two, two weeks ago. We were at Darlington at the, the really tight prep race. You saw it done to Great Big Willie. And uh, then the next pass, it spun. We got down to the, you know, into the next round. And then the race got canceled. So we don't really have much data. The thing about this 252 list race is it's off the trailer. So it's one of those things. I hadn't been to Kenson in a very long time. Uh, we call it like semi-prep. So it's not one of those tracks where you can go out there and go 430s, 440s pretty easy. So it's one of those tracks, I think, in the 470, 480 range is going to be like top dog. But I think in order to go some rounds, you know, that 490, 50 range. Now, I could be completely missing it, and everybody might be running 460s or 470s. But from, you know, last year looking at it, that's about what it is. Now, I know everybody's done a bunch of upgrades, and so everybody is trying to go faster like normal. So we'll see what happens. Over here on the race car, what I'm gonna do today, I pulled the data logs. We're gonna just check everything over, make sure everything's in good shape. The car is still in the trailer, we ain't touched it. So I'm gonna pull the hood off of it, you know, make sure all the, everything's in good shape under the hood. Uh, we'll probably crank it up, see what it does there, make sure everything's in good shape. I gotta back it off just a little bit so I can drain the oil. Uh, well, I ain't gonna drain the oil, I'm gonna drain the water off of the oil. And then hopefully, um, you know, the oil is gonna be fine. So I gotta unstrap it, pull it back. Uh, you see all this weight that we had that we took out last time we were at the track. Um, we had 125 pounds in the trunk. Remember the last video when we were there, we took all that out. I, it would be a good idea to scale the car, but I mean, I may not put the weight back in it. We're kind of going to wait and see what it looks like when we're at the track. If the track looks like it's going to be in pretty decent shape, we might leave the weight out of it. Uh, I mean, this thing becomes a wheelie monster when, when you got the weight in the back. I mean, all that ballast. So we may just leave it out, leave the suspension the way it is. I thought about putting a little bit more anti-squat in it, trying to make it uh, separate more. Most people out there, they're on slicks, they're not on radials. So I'm on the pro bracket radials still. So we'll see how it works out. It may need some more anti-squat. So that's something I need to think about in order to, what I'm gonna do on the anti-squat, if I do change it, it's gonna be the upper bars. I'm gonna angle it down just a little bit more. That'll give me like 175, 180% anti-squat. So it'll get some nice separation in the back, which has got a lot of separation now. But uh, the front end's got to be untied again, so I got some travel I got to put in the front. Uh, so that's going to be not too big a deal. Tune up. I'm gonna look at the tune up. Pull the. Um, I'm gonna pull some data from some of my old files, and I'm gonna grab like a 50 tune up, and then we're gonna swap everything over. All right, let's get started. All right, let's see how much water is in this thing. Just gonna bring the water off. Yeah, it's been sitting for two weeks, so it ought to be separated pretty good. Oh no, it's just mixed. Yeah. I'm gonna get a quart out and just put a quart in. Okay, so we got the oil drained. We got about a uh, quart drained off of it. It is about to pour down rain. So the sun's out now. It is cloudy as I'll get out and thundering. So let's see if this thing will crank up or not. Turbo 
to leave the shock settings where they are, most likely. I did buy some new paint, so we might touch up the paint on this thing on the front end. And the hood. so we can actually see the laptop. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is just download this file from the ECU. Let me see this in my fuel map over here. So that should be pretty good. That's where we were just at, save it. So now we have, we gotta get our Darlington tune out of there. Uh, we know we're not gonna do uh, to the front suspension to give it more travel. But the power that I was trying to leave on previously is not going to work. That is not going to work at all. So I talk to y'all a lot of times. I'll talk to you all the time about, you know, saving your data logs and labeling them. A lot of people just have hundreds and hundreds of data logs and they have no way to know, you know, what it was they have to hunt. This is what gives us a pretty good advantage on coming off the trailer, coming, you know, anywhere you're at when you're changing. So you can see, I'd, when I when I do mine, I data log all of them. And in there, I've got the, the date, where I was at, what happened, and but most importantly, I've got the ET and stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and start planning. You know, I think 490s or so is what it's gonna take. So right there, that tune up right there, that was at Thunder Valley, 128, 60 foot, had a strong mile per hour. Now, you know, it's no time what we're gonna be running, so I won't be able to show y'all no times next. Uh, over the weekend, but you know, it is what it is. I mean, everybody has a pretty good idea of you know what everybody's running anyway. So, we're going to dial this 499 tune up in it to start with. And so, you can see that big green light that spike right there. I've got I've worked on that and got that out. That was in the fuel and tune. So, let's see all my data here. I mean, it's showing you, and I, you know, a lot of people don't show y'all this, but I. You know, I don't mind sharing. I love to race, and I want y'all to go as fast as possible. If I got a race, I want to beat you at your best, not when you're having problems or when you're not, you know, doing good. So I dropped the RPM down to 4,000 RPM. Dome pressure uh, was 10 PSI. So let's go ahead and do that. Ooh, 110, that would be bad. That's my scramble, just in case. Okay, I can't change that since it's online. Let's go offline here. And then we'll send it to the laptop. So I'm drop that down to 4,000. I don't use Spark only. Some people use different ones. I don't know which one's better, which one's worse. That's just what I use. So now you can see this line right here is my, my target. And this is why I keep it simple. You know, you, a lot of times you see people that have really extravagant boost curves. They'll come over and flatline and they go do a nice little gradual J. That's all fine and dandy, but it's hard to duplicate it because you know there's so many points in there. So let's see, so we were at three second, three second ramp to 45 pounds of, of boost or target, 45 pound target, so three seconds. And this may get run over, like I said. I mean, it's over, off the trailer. Maybe we could leave it at 50 there if we want to go just a tad faster. I think we should. I think we should leave it there at 50 and then drop it. Now, one of the things is also that first point right here, this is when you let go of the trans brake. So generally, I have it at the same, but if I try to hit it really hard, like at Darlington, if I could have, if we, we could have made a bunch more passes, I could have got the front end stay down. I think I was going to have to make an instant center change. I have to shorten it up a little bit to make it so it didn't try to wheelie. Leaving it at 14 on the trans brake, and then this first stop being 19 or 20, 
that makes the, the turbo spool up faster. It makes it get up a little quicker once you let go of the trans brake button. Doesn't do anything on the trans brake button, but when you let go of the button, that makes it get on the boost curve faster because it's giving it more dome pressure quicker. So, but usually when I'm on a first tune in with it, you know, I try to keep it the same so it's not too aggressive. Let's do 50. You can see my time down there on the bottom. Got three seconds. We're gonna do the same thing. That'll, that'll be a little bit faster than previously. But this should be like a 475, 485 tune up. Somewhere in that range. Probably 480 to 485. Not a ton faster. A little bit faster to the 60 foot though, hopefully. So that would be about right there. About a two and a half second ramp. So that ought to be pretty decent. So there's our, that should be a four second pass. Um, you know, we went to 499 with it when we were at Thunder Valley, when we were testing or whatever that was, I didn't pay attention. So it is starting to warm up though. So with it warming up, of course, it's, it's gonna be a little, a little different. You make less power when it's hot out. I'm not gonna really play with my, my timing or anything as far as trying to, to get it to make more power. I mean, when you're only running, when you're not running max boost, I mean, if it don't make as much power at 25 pounds of boost as you thought it was going to, it's pretty simple. You press the scramble button over there, boom, or you, you know, turn the boost up, you know, before you go make a pass. So luckily it's pretty easy. So that is my tune up. So my tune up is, is ready to rock and roll. Can't remember if I saved it or not. All right. So something else I gotta do, the leash controller, since I'm lowered to two step, I've gotta modify this a little bit. This one was leaving previously on 18. So if I left it there, that's not gonna bump quite enough. So I'm gonna move that up to 20 and it bumps three times. So that ought to be pretty good. So the, what happens with that is when you drop RPM, you have to increase the amount the, of time that the solenoid is, is bumping. Uh, if you don't, the car won't move. And so same thing is the opposite. When you take in the, uh, when you raise the RPM, then you have to drop that number because it's too violent. I know when they do it in the Holly, they can do it, you know, a little bit different. Let's see what kind of coolant temperature we got. We'll let, let, let it run there for a few minutes. Uh, coolant temp, 114 degrees. I've got that, that pump. I tried to turn on the, the oil, the fuel pump for the water pump earlier, but it didn't even work. So I hadn't been running it in a while. <laughs> So, you know, methanol keeps it nice and cool. So that's a good thing, but um, I'm gonna give you another pump and run it something. All right, guys, also don't forget, go to our website, turbojohnracing.com. We got some merchandise, some new t-shirts, and also don't forget to hit the join button. We had our first live feed last night. We talked for about an hour and 15 minutes. All right, guys, will y'all comment, like, and subscribe, hit that join button, go to turbojohnracing.com.